Our loving God created this world perfect, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Genesis 1.31 But the entrance of sin, which is the transgression of God's law, brought death, pain, suffering, and sorrow to our world. We see in the scriptures that God plans to bring a final end to sin and its results. He plans to bring an end to death, pain, suffering, and sorrow. We read Psalms 37 from verse 9, For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Verse 10, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. We see that those who wait upon the Lord will be the ones who finally inherit the earth and everlasting life. However, those who cling to sin will be cut off from existence. We thank God for Jesus who freely washes us from sin and gives us his righteousness. The same fate of the wicked is still mentioned in Obadiah verse 16. It says, For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. The sure word of prophecy tells us in advance of a time when the wicked will no longer be in existence, a time when only those who surrender themselves to God completely inherit the earth. We read Matthew verse 7 from verse 13. Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Verse 14, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. From what we have read so far, we see that the wicked are destroyed completely. They are not preserved in torments without end. We have read that the way of sin leads to destruction. Jesus invites us to go through the narrow gate, which leads to life. The question is, how are the wicked destroyed? We read Malachi chapter 4 from verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Verse 2. But unto you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Verse 3. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Here we have read another testimony of Scripture, that the wicked will be turned into ashes. They are consumed in the fire. They are not preserved in the fire, but they are burned up. They are destroyed completely. All who cling to sin and to Satan are destroyed with him. For sin, death, suffering, pain and sorrow cannot be destroyed completely, while those who continue in sin are left to live without end. God brings all this to a final end in the lake of fire and brimstone. We read Revelation 20, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. When sin and sinners and death are destroyed, the promise of God to his people is then fulfilled. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. That is Revelation 21, verse 1, verse 4. Brothers and sisters, our loving God has delayed this work of destruction, 
this work of purifying the earth from sin because he wants us to accept his son by faith. He wants us to allow Jesus to wash us from sin with his blood and to give us power to obey him fully, power to live free from sin. We read Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance.